Today, I want to share something fun I recently started experimenting with. It's a little controversial, and it's about using a crop on purpose. There are some interesting advantages. I started using the APS-C crop mode to zoom in and avoid changing the lens. This advantage raised some red flags, though. So let's jump in and see what I discovered. Here we go. Isn't any crop supposed to be the opposite of good for filming? No, and I'm gonna explain why using a few quick tests. But before we begin, let's start with the typical contrarian example. On this camera, it has an APS-C crop when you select 60 frames per second. So many people complain about it, and that makes sense because this crop forces you to reframe your shot when all you're trying to do is increase the amount of frames. You don't want to reframe your shot, you just want slow motion. So you either have to change the lens or move the position of the camera to get the same shot. But what if you're filming at 24 frames per second and you choose to reframe on purpose? You know, like changing your lens from a 50 millimeter to 85 millimeter. This is a different situation because we will reframe a shot for a close up medium shot, or establishing scene, for example. In that situation, I don't care about a faster frame rate to capture slow motion in post, but I'm avoiding a lens change if I change from full frame to APS-C. This also uses a smaller portion of the sensor at the same time and brings up my first question. Is the resolution gonna be high quality 4K image when it's cropped? The second question that popped up was about light. If I use a smaller portion of the sensor with a full frame sensor, will I need more light? And finally, if I'm using a smaller portion of the sensor, is my rolling shutter performance improved? Let's jump into the first test. In the Lumix S5 manual on page 249, Panasonic explains that the crop modes do the following. Narrowing the image area allows you to achieve a telescopic effect without deterioration. Interesting. Remember, this is the same 6K sensor from the S1H, so punching into APS-C shouldn't have a degraded image in 4K. On the left is 4K footage at full frame, and on the right is the same footage in 4K using APS-C, which is a one and a half crop. So if I'm using a 50 millimeter, the APS-C mode shifts the view to 75 millimeter. Okay, no notable differences yet. Here you can see pixel in pixel mode is only a 1.56 crop. And here I'm showing a split shot with the full frame on the left at one and a half times zoom and the APS-C with the actual crop on the right. Still no notable differences yet. Let's punch in at 10 times zoom and see. Okay, it's much more noticeable now. The word espresso is clearly more defined on the right which has an APS-C crop. Now let's punch in 20 times. That is considerably noticeable. The letters in espresso are obviously much more clearly defined as well as the gap between the D and the E in decent. Okay, and finally let's add in the pixel and pixel mode since the crop is so close to APS-C at 4K at 1.56. The word espresso looks pretty much the same as APS-C. For the final test, we'll zoom in on the Onyx box and compare the word lab for a more three-dimensional comparison. I hope this transfers to YouTube correctly, but the APS-C zoom is clearly better here again. The letters definitely pop on the right, where on the left they're more pixelated at the 30 times zoom, which makes sense. Should be pixelated. The point here is that the definition is definitely there using APS-C modes. So the first assurance is that using the APS-C is not just a digital zoom. I have to agree with the Lumix manual's explanation. There is no image deterioration in this frame, and I have a correct resolution for the objects in the smaller window. Okay, all of our examples so far have been in 4K, but what about HD? I think there are still quite a few of us that use it. So let's see how the APS-C crop and pixel and pixel modes are in HD. We're gonna start in HD full frame using a 45 millimeter IRX lens this time. Now let's select APS-C mode for the one and a half crop. Now finally, let's select the pixel and pixel mode and you'll see it's a massive 3.1 crop. And in this case, that makes the 45 millimeter a 140 millimeter lens equivalent. Now let's add the full frame shot on the right with a 3.1 zoom for comparison. Focus is off a little bit now. 
So in HD, APS-C mode is the same crop at one and a half times, but in pixel and pixel mode, it's a 3.1 crop. This is a much different than the pixel to pixel mode in 4K. On page 250 in the Panasonic S5 manual, it shows a picture that I thought was an overstated image for the high definition example. It isn't. Okay, on to the next quick test, light. I went back and forth on which test to do here. I started with a test just changing the modes on a scene and saw the light meter drop when I focused in. But this was dumb <laughs> because the scene had darker elements. Of course the light meter is going to say add more light. So I think I found a better test that would help me understand if the sensor was requiring more light or not. This definitely isn't a foolproof test, but I focused the camera on a whiteboard. Then I went through 4K full frame, APS-C, and pixel and pixel to see if the light meter was going to require more light for the smaller focused area on the sensor. Here we can see the same test in HD. The light meter didn't change to APS-C and didn't even change in pixel to pixel mode, which has a 3.1 crop. The light meter isn't the magical answer for everything, but it gives you a good starting point of what the sensor is saying it needs. Okay, last quick test, rolling shutter. This had some surprising results. Yes, it's true. The S5 isn't winning any awards for rolling shutter results. It isn't the worst, but it definitely isn't the best either. But let's see what surprises I discovered. The website CineD explains that the S5's rolling shutter is clocked in at 21 milliseconds in full frame. And here's a surprise, 10 and a half milliseconds in APS-C. So I won't spend a lot of time running too many tests here since the answer is pretty obvious. There is half the rolling shutter in APS-C mode. But for the fun of it, here is what full frame looks like in comparison to APS-C mode, just by shaking the camera. 4K is pretty obvious. This got me thinking though, what about HD? I couldn't find any information about the millisecond reading, but here's the same non-foolproof comparison since I don't have the strobe light test equipment to get the exact numbers. I think 1080 has even less rolling shutter, which makes sense because you're reading less information in the same sensors, so it should take less time to read from top to bottom. Again, not an exact science here, but the surprise for me was that the APS-C mode does have some advantages over full frame. In this case, the advantage is clear, half the rolling shutter, even in 4K. So the 4K image in the smaller APS-C frame is a true 4K image, and you get half the rolling shutter than full frame. And if you shoot in HD, you even get better rolling shutter results with properly scaled resolution and a three times zoom in pixel to pixel mode. I would say those are pretty fantastic results when using the built-in crop functions in the Lumix S5. I am fully convinced that using the APS-C mode helps me get more out of my lenses on this camera because it has a 6K sensor. The pixel density is there. So punching in using the crop mode on my 50 millimeter to get a 75 millimeter shot is absolutely worth it. In conclusion, don't be afraid to use the crop modes. In the next video, I'll be sharing why in the world I purchased a nine foot jib and how much fun it is to film with. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining and I'll see you in the next video.